bees spanning every continent but Antarctica and comprising over 20,000 species. They are the keystone of the world's agricultural production. It is estimated that one out of every three bites of food we eat exist because of bees. Both wild and domestic, bees perform about 80% of all pollination worldwide. Without these furry friends, yields on up to 35% of agricultural land would suffer tremendously. You would think we would do everything we can to ensure the well-being of a species so essential to our food supply. However, in recent decades, due largely to the impact of humans, bee populations have been on a rapid decline. What are some of the major reasons that bee populations have been declining in recent decades? A lot of you have heard about this idea of colony collapse disorder. And bee colonies are under threats, as are wild pollinators, from a loss of habitat, from the predominant use of pesticides in many parts of the country and on farmland in particular. Neonicotinoids are one type of pesticide that can really interfere with the neural pathways of bees. There's also this issue of varroa mites. You can combat varroa mites as a beekeeper through things like oxalic acid vaporizer. In some winters, like this last one, you know, all your efforts kind of come to naught and you lose all of your hives or a good number of your hives. What factors have been responsible for the decline in bee population in recent years? Unlikely to be only one factor, there's neonicotinoid uh, insecticides or pesticides that are wiping out the bees. There's obviously the environment is changing, climate change is shifting the phenology, which means the, the timing of flowering. So things are flowering earlier, and so honeybees have to adjust their phenology as well to, to keep track. So climate change, if they're not ready, if they, if they emerge late or they mature late and the flowers are gone, then that's going to be a problem. There are lots of papers on this that any sort of popular press or scientific article you read about this indicates that the bee population has declined and it is very closely linked to pesticide use, specifically these nicotine-based pesticides. That are, there's, there's systemic pesticides that are sprayed on plants and this, the use of, they're called neonicotinoids, which are these nicotine-based pesticides, widely used and they're really bad for bees. The honeybees will go and collect the pollen and they take it back to their, they basically take these little balls of poison back to the hive and it causes colony collapse disease, disorder. And so I think it's very clear that what has been responsible for the massive decline, I don't know, some numbers are 50% uh, or maybe more of bees declining the bee population. That's a huge problem because everything we eat is pollinated by a honeybee except for the grains. Grains are pollinated by the wind, but you know, tomatoes, broccoli, you name it, almonds, they're all pollinated by, by honeybees. Is the future of pollinators really so grim and dire? Are bees doomed to become an exhibit in a history museum? One organization driven by the mission to raise awareness of this modern day catastrophe is the Adirondack Pollinator Project. For the last five years and counting, the APP has been spreading awareness on the very real threat of pollinator mass extinction through informational brochures, lectures, and film showings. Through a distribution network of community volunteers and homeowners, the APP gives out neonic free seeds to facilitate the growth of diverse and pollinator-friendly plants. On a smaller scale, how can you play a role in assisting a pollinator comeback? Well, I think there's a number of things that we can do, and this does give you some hope when you think about the future. I think that anyone who owns any amount of land, for example, a yard, a small yard even, can take the opportunity to grow less green grass and more things like wildflowers, any type of forage that the pollinators will find useful to them, which also are just very varied and, and wonderful things to have around. I think that pollinators rely upon a whole variety of different types of plants. And sometimes, you know, anyone who does use pesticides, uh, go organic. Think about ways that you can keep the plants that you want to have in your, your yard alive without using pesticides. We are in the midst of a worldwide agricultural struggle, a tipping of balances that could veer toward either pollinator devastation or prosperity. Together, through our combined efforts, no matter how large or small, we have the power to come out of this tunnel of uncertainty toward fields with quite literally greener pastures.